Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I am Leah, and I am joined by Bonnie, Katie, and Lisa, and we are talking about our one cool science thing. So... Miss Bon Bon already talked about Alice Ball, and Katie already talked about Mary Ainsworth. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I hesitated. I just hesitated there. I think I wrote it down very, very silly. <laughs> and Lisa already talked about Marie Van Britten Brown. Look at that. I like I put, her name. I put all Van on Britten those Britten syllables. Brown. Right, exactly. Van Britten Brown. Yes. But before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pal. So my question is, And I think there's going to be a lot of caveats on this, dear listeners. (laughs) So get ready and strap in. But my question is, time freezes for everyone but you for one day. What do you do? Whatever caveats you need, whatever rules you need. Dun, 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 dun. Well, if it's just the people, I'm going to go take care of all the puppies. Yes, you are. Let out all the doggies. (laughs) I kind of thought it would be like, I'm going to pet all the dogs. Yes. (laughs) We're going to let them out to go potty. There you go. Very nice. And, you know, pet them and give them a cookie. Yes. As many as I can get. Exactly. <laughs> I can see you running down the street. Bon Bon's here, puppies. <laughs> Come get me. Your people are frozen. I love you. <laughs> Be Come fantastic. Home with me. I would watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. What about you, ladies? What would you do? I mean, there's so many options. I know, right? Mm-hmm. I know. I'm an extrovert and I wouldn't have any people to talk to. Yeah. So that would, that would be bad. That'd be hard. Talk that to them. Be... They just don't talk back. Correct. Right. One sided well, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> when you're an extrovert, that's not better. I talk to my dogs all the time and I'm freaking hilarious. <laughs> sure. That's <laughs> You are a stand yeah. up comedian with your dogs. Yes. Yeah. No, there's books to read. There is. Yes. And. Yes. Uh, Sharpie mustaches to draw. Wait, yes. No, I'm not an educator, <laughs> I must say. There are, no. Um, and I, I, I would need it to be a day that no one else knew about. Right. That's also, fair. The, for me, the pets would have to be frozen because I couldn't mm. let all the doggies out and right. or the cats. And also, you know, um, that's no good. So, <laughs> I feel like Lisa's <laughs> having an existential crisis <laughs> just, with this, this is, question. It's a really <laughs> difficult <laughs> question. There's so much I want to get done, but then if I had, um, you know, I need a transporter too so I could go to a beach. Yes. Mm. See, there you go. I mean, if time's going to freeze, I might as well have a transporter. Right. Absolutely. This is your world. You get to right. create it in this scenario. Yes. yes. I like the beach scenario. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the ocean's frozen. No, because it's just, just the, people. the people. Just, just the, the people. people. Okay. okay. Yes. But the so you could have the you could have the ocean to yourself. There would be no screaming people because <laughs> it's kids and people always screaming at beaches. I like how they're two separate things. They really are kids and people. Oh, I'm sorry, the yeah. adult like people. <laughs> no, that's fair. The high pitched yeah. screaming of some kind. I'm like, because I'll be like, I, don't I even will know who that just coming never from. forget <laughs> that birthday party of Samantha's. Oh my your god, your daughter. It was some elementary school birthday and oh. more screaming have I never heard in my entire life at a pitch that is ungodly. I didn't know <laughs> that bingo me. could be my Vietnam. It <laughs> is. It was. like They were yelling oh. at me to call their numbers like their lives depended on. It became bloody. It was bad. <laughs> wow. It was Good. traumatic. We were outside. They had too much sugar. We were outside. We were outside. Oh, and it was still sugar. haunting. Yeah, I thought was it was so much. I can't okay. I can't play bingo ever again. <laughs> so <laughs> Yes. Katie, yeah, did a little you, distracting. But did you did oh, do I have you? anything? I'm going to take the Lisa. We go to the beach. Oh, you are. We'll go with that. Oh, we'll go with that and draw some mustaches. Um, I mean, not draw some mustaches. No, I think not a single sharpie mustache. I mean, no, no, that I mean if they me. don't no. have a proof, I mean, no. come on. Right, exactly. No proof. So since yeah. Josh doesn't listen to this podcast, why I can doesn't tell Josh you? listen to this podcast? I mean, your will and testament <laughs> is on the show now, right? <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a good question. You right. should ask him. We should. 
Josh, why aren't you listening to the show? <laughs> so since Josh doesn't listen, I'm going to go ahead and say, now Lisa brought up the point of consent. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this Very might be kind of ugly for Very her. Difficult. But I'm going to pluck Josh's eyebrows <laughs> while he's frozen. He has one that's like three inches long. Oh. And it's super blonde and it just, it's really distracting. <laughs> you just want that Are one? Sweet yeah. Sweet, man. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pluck his eyebrows. <laughs> Gonna do some manscaping. I'm gonna do some manscaping. Um, and some That's book good. reading. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, some yeah, book yeah. reading. Um, sweet. It's gonna wake up with like contour. Will you have a smoky eye? eye? Maybe. Smoky Maybe eye. a guinea pig. I mean, he has really pretty eyes. See, he took off his she glasses once eye. to clean them at work, and one of the kids was like, "You have girl eyes." <laughs> <laughs> Katie's like, mm-hmm. pretty eyes. I mean, and initially when you said this, I was like, I yeah. should steal something so I can better my life. But that's kind of wrong. But There's lots of different it's an ways idea. To go. It's a maybe. Right. There you go. What about you? Uh, if time freezes, I have to go with my caveat is that also my t- metabolism freezes. Oh, I eat yeah. all of the fucking carbs in the world. Yes. <laughs> because that's a good I'm point. diabetic and I'm not <gasps> supposed to have carbs and sugar. We So I would eat all the shit. <laughs> we can go to Alexander's. We'll, we'll yes. all meet up. Mm-hmm. We can there go to go. Alexander's and on the square and have an ice cream party. And they have all the chocolates. Mm. So, I mean, it's so, I mean, mine sounds like it's like I'm in elementary school and I just want to go into oh. the candy store but like I'm a grown ass woman that's not really supposed to have sugar and carbs right now and who doesn't really want to go to the candy store and I want to go to the candy yeah. store yeah, so I I want to pour yeah. my own beer oh. at the new brewery down there on the square mm. yes there you go never see? been a bartender dun, 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 come dun, to my dun. party see if I can make that happen <laughs> <laughs> all right well, uh, the reason why I asked that question and why I have all the sugar and all the carbs, it does actually tie into my gal that I was going to talk about. Um, so my science gal has won the Nobel Prize. <gasps> I know, Excellent. just a little tiny thing. Uh, not she's, to brag or anything. Not to brag or anything, but I got a Nobel Prize with my name on it. Uh, she's a biochemist. She has the coolest name ever. I love her name. Uh, my one cool science gal is Gertie Corey. That's, that a is good name. Name. That's an excellent name. Isn't it? I know. So Gertie, I will try not to say it like that every time I mention her, <laughs> but Gertie Please. and her husband, Carl, they developed the process, uh, or discovered, not developed, they discovered the process of how the body breaks down sugars, and it's called the Cori cycle. All right. So I have a little bit of stock in this game, <laughs> but I have two reasons why I picked Gertie. Um, the first one is she's in my women of science presentation that I go into schools and talk about. Um, at the end of one of the presentations that I did for adults, I, I always ask the question, whether it's kids or adults, like, who did you already know? Who did you just learn about today? And who would you like to know more about? These are uh, common questions that are in like middle school and high school that they use to assess learning. Uh, but I use them with adults, too, because adults find them really fascinating. And one of the times when I was with the adults, uh, there was a doctor there who said, I work with the Cori cycle system all the time and never knew that it was uh, designed and discovered by a woman. Just never really thought about it. And it just kind of like um, it made her intrigued and want to know more. And the processes that she does, there's real people behind it who lived real lives um, and that she could see it and be it and relate to it and all that kind of good stuff. So I was like, here's a doctor that knows the name of the Cori cycle and yet had no idea who it was. Uh, The second reason why Gertie is my pick is the Cori cycle was absolutely critical when it comes to the understanding and the treatment of the diabetes, (laughs) (laughs) right? Glorious diabetes. Um, So as you guys know, uh, I have been struggling with the diabetes (laughs) and my extended family absolutely hates when I share personal information. However, I'm here to help the people. So uh, (laughs) I had an A1C of 7.4. So 6.5 means you're above that you're diabetic so that's like the baseline so i was i was healthy into the diabetes when i got my diagnosis um i worked with the verda clinic i changed the way that i ate i got on medication cut out the carbs and the sugars i went keto it sucks but it was really important 
And I went all the way down to 5.7. Now, 5.6 means you're no longer diabetic. So I was right there on the line. Ah. So 5.7 is pre-diabetes, you know, mm. like you're just touching, just touching the line. <laughs> so I'm still on medication, uh, but I'm not going to toot my own horn because I have another test coming up and I haven't been that good the last couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a whole library thing yeah. and carbs are tasty. It's really hard, but I'm doing as best as I can. But this is a lifetime thing for me. It's very genetic. Also, I eat shitty. So it's something that I have to work on. And I have to keep my diabetes in check. So, but I am not the only one because according to the CDC, one in 10 Americans have diabetes. Uh, one in three have pre-diabetes. So there's four of us at the table. Obviously, hands up, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, that kind of rule, but one out of three have pre-diabetes and those are the only, those are the people who actually know. A lot of people are just living like Larry, living their life and not being tested at all and don't know what their sugars are. So it could be even like far more, uh, especially in America. Let me just put it that way. We all know why. <laughs> Is that a normal test that happens when you have your annual visit it with your personal care provider? It I like how you put all that in there. Excuse me, insurance lady. <laughs> it depends on your insurance, actually. Mm -hmm. Like. So Josh's insurance is who orders our yearly blood test, and it does include an A1C, mm. but we had a previous carrier before that never tested mm. A1C. So it, it probably just depends. And if you just went in for like a physical, you would probably have to ask for it. Yeah. Unless they thought like, oh, it's in the family, or you look kind of swollen and overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we test your sugars? Like that seems to be like, you know, the go-to thing because obviously there's a one in three chance now mm -hmm. that you, you got the sugars. Um, so I wanted to know more about the gal whose work it was pretty much like, you know, saving my life and keeping my feet on uh, and helping billions of people. <laughs> I didn't write down saving my feet, but it's true. It was so I'm, good. Like, I'm like that I have my feet still and I think I got really feet swollen. Feet are nice. I've learned that they have value. <laughs> so Gertie Corey was born in Prague in 1896. Uh, her parents encouraged her to attend medical school. Like, you're smart. You got to go to medical school. That's like extremely rare. Um, but she did. She went to medical school. She went to the University of Prague, where she was one of very few female students, but she was not the only one. So bonus. Yay. Uh, she graduated in 1920, along with her classmate, Carl Corey. Aww. So Gertie and Carl married and they started working in clinics. Uh, during World War I, Carl was drafted in and also served in the Austrian army. So uh, during that time, Gertie was diagnosed with severe malnutrition due to food shortages. So it wasn't just mm -hmm. that, like, there wasn't much food. Like, she was diagnosed, like, bed rest, like, you're going to die if you don't get some liquids and some proteins in you. Um, they decided to get the hell out of Europe. <laughs> Good call. Not the worst idea in the world, right? To get the hell out of Europe. Uh, they applied for labs in the United States. So Gertie and Carl got jobs at... Oh, the name of this institution. Okay. The State Institute for the Study of Malignant, Malignant Diseases. Mm. That's the name of the place. They changed it later to Roswell Park Memorial. Mm. <laughs> Something about Seems malignant valid. diseases didn't seem like, ooh, come on in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this place is sexy. Have fun with it. Yeah, no. It's kind of dark and dangerous. I don't know if Roswell's necessarily better, but I mean, no. this was like, right. you know. <laughs> This was World War II-ish, you know, yeah. kind of end of World War II-ish. Before the UFOs? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. But maybe not. Like, we don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> so uh, the school did not want them to work together because, finger quotes, it was un-American. Uh -huh. I was trying to unpack that one. I think what they mean is sexist. But anyway, um, they really meant that women don't work together with men. Maybe it's the breast assist thing again. It's the mm -hmm. attachment issue. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, but they did anyway. They didn't care. They were going to work together. Uh, they dedicated their research to how energy is produced and transmitted in the body. And that led them to how sugar is metabolized within the body. Um, they jointly published 50 papers together. Cool. And then Corey, Corey, sorry, Gertie, Corey, Gertie, she did 11 papers completely on her own uh, that were also published about the topic. In 1929, they published their findings that would be named the Corey cycle. So we're talking 1929, they developed their research. So 
I'm going to go a super simplified version of what the hell the Cory cycle is because A, drinks, B, not a real doctor. My honorary doctor is not like a real doctor or anything like that, so I have no idea. But so the Cory cycle, it's how we use sugar for physical activity and it's how those sugars and carbs are broken down, how they're put back together into uh, using our muscles and our liver. That's the overall. I'll go, I'll, I'll paint a little bit better of a picture. Okay, so stored in like your muscles are glucose, which is sugar, right? So you have sugar that are stored in your muscles. When you're about to do a physical activity, uh, like raise your hand or do a marathon, um, your muscles break down that sugar into two different chemicals. What do you think? Yes, exactly. I'm when you're ready to do this, hand. we're just raising the hand. Uh, it breaks it down into pavirite, and then it breaks it down into lactate. The lactate then goes from your muscle into your bloodstream, and then it gets to your liver. Okay. So then when it's in your liver, it reverses the cycle. Those two chemicals, it goes back to those two chemicals, and then it goes right back to sugar again. So it goes through one, and then it comes back. So now there is the sugar in your liver. Your liver then talks to your body and says, hey, where do you need this to go? Are you going to start running next? <laughs> like, what physical activity yeah. do your muscles need? So the liver then sends it the sugar where it needs to be. And when there's excess, it stays in your muscles until you use it again. And that's the Cori cycle. It goes out of one thing through the bloodstream into the other thing. And when you need it, it's there. I honestly have no idea. Right? <laughs> yeah. The problem is, is when your body's messed up like mine is, uh. it doesn't know where to send the sugars oh. and it doesn't know how to break them down. And so the cycle gets messed up. Your liver starts communicating wrong of where your sugars are supposed to go. That's diabetes. <laughs> I just like that you talk about the liver while I'm pouring myself a pink drink. I'm like, <laughs> have yourself some more liver. pink drink. Exactly. Oh. The liver. <laughs> so the next time someone calls me pudgy, I'm just be like, no, I've got a lot of sugar in my muscles. Yeah, that's right. You know, see, exactly. <laughs> Your muscles are sweet. <laughs> that's what it is. So, you know, it's uh, absolutely clear as mud. That's what our body yeah. does. Uh, according to an article on changing the face of medicine, they worded how important the cycle is a little bit better than I could do. It says, quote, their discovery of this process was especially useful for the treatment of diabetes, but it was also the first time the cycle of carbohydrates in the human body had been fully understood or explained. Nobody was studying um, carbohydrates because mm -hmm. we always hear sugars and the body needs sugars. Well, a carb is a sugar, but they they were the ones that started looking at how the body breaks down a complex carb and a simple carb and how it turns it into sugar. And then we have a sugar problem. So because the institute that they were at, the one that became Roswell, where apparently aliens were, mm -hmm. um, they were mostly concentrating on like cancer stuff. And theirs wasn't really in the cancer well, realm. They didn't get anywhere. <laughs> right? Oh, there you go. Uh, so they wanted to find a new lab to go and continue their research in. Uh, it made it difficult because they wanted to continue to work together. And nobody was really cool with that. Uh, There's a handful of universities that actually flat out refused to hire Gertie, but of course would hire Carl, because that's fair. Uh, the University of Rochester even warned Gertie she might ruin her husband's career if they insist on continuing to work together. What's like the, uh -huh. what, what are they worried about? <laughs> They're already married. They're already married. They're already doing it. Yeah. Like, I think what it is, it's a man and a woman in the same workspace. It might give other people ideas. Like this could be the future. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. But the cool thing is, is that Gertie and Carl refused to stop working together. They insisted it was them or it was no job whatsoever. Uh, eventually, they moved to St. Louis in 1931, and they went to the Washington University School of Medicine, and Carl was developed or was offered, Carl was offered a department position. Gertie was offered research assistant. Hmm. But they were okay at working with each other. That was fine. Um, Gertie made one-tenth the amount of money that her husband made. Mm. And they both had their name on papers oh. with the Cory cycle. Right? Uh, Gertie was a research yeah. assistant for 13 years. That entire time, uh, she watched Carl rise through the ranks at the university. But after 13 years, she was made a full professor. Took some time, but she got there. Um, in 1947, so she was made professor a year before she won the Nobel Prize, by the way. I do have to give them that credit. It wasn't like, 
I think they're going to win the Nobel Prize. We should quit, give her a real job. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't that. It I mean, seems it, like. It, maybe it wasn't that, but. But it doesn't paint a beautiful picture. I mean. <laughs> Nobel, how long between, hey, that maybe should be a Nobel and actually winning is mm, there? Is correct. It, Cause it, it was like be more than a year. Yeah, because they uh, published their findings in 31, and then 47 is when they actually, like, mm. won the Nobel. So there could have been some stink on it but she got it yay finally um but in 1947 gertie and carl won the nobel prize for their work on how the body has a cycle for converting glycogen sugar basically um so now i had to look up some nobel prize shit (laughs) (laughs) because the categories and like the timelines there's a lot of different ways that they classified like what gertie's major accomplishment was um okay So there are five categories for the Nobel Prize, all right? Three of them are sciences, so they'll always talk about, like, the first in science. There's physics, chemistry, and then they group these two together, physiology and medicine. Those are a Nobel, but they're two different categories. Um, So those are your science fields. Then there's the Nobel Prize for literature, Mm -hmm. and then there's the Nobel Peace Prize, Mm -hmm. right? So those are the five, well, those are the five different ones. So Gertie and Carl won in the medicine category, this was the first time ever that a woman won in the medicine category. Bum, bum, bum. So amazing. Yay. Mm-hmm. She's the first there. Uh, Gertie was also the first American women, American woman to win the Nobel Prize in a science field. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Jane Addams was the first American woman to ever win a Nobel. Um, but that was for the Nobel Peace Prize. So there's that. So it's like she won. By the way, we have an amazing Jane uh, Jane Adams podcast on Your Gal Friday. Check it out. It's in the show notes. Anyway, um, <laughs> I nearly also got into a scuffle with a lady at a Girl Scout meeting because I was talking about how Gertie was the first American woman to win a Nobel in science, and they're like, "That's not accurate. It's Marie Curie." Uh. Marie Curie's not American, y'all. <laughs> as much as we want to claim her, she is Polish and French. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's not American. Okay, I will end my rant there. But I was. <laughs> it, it doesn't help if you Google it. If you say it first, American woman mm-hmm. to win in science, it shows you Marie Curie. Like mm-hmm. it show like it's we mm, bad. Mm, they really <laughs> want it. She's not American. It is fine that she was. She has two, by the way. Marie Curie mm-hmm. has two, and her daughter has one as well. So. She's got it. All right. So I'll end my rant. Uh, so the Corys continued researching more on carbohydrate metabolism. Um, that's why when your body is diabetic, it struggles with carbs as well as sugars of breaking them down. The Corys probably knew all about the keto diet way before it was like the fad that it is today. <laughs> but, you know, of course, it didn't have a name like keto diet back then. <laughs> uh, but Gritty and Carl also discovered a compound glucose one faucet phosphate which was later called the Cori Ester. You were talking about an ester um, that was discovered too. And I was just like, I wonder if it's the same thing. I think an ester is like an enzyme, but I really don't know. I don't know. It's like a type of thing in the body and the brain. But that's my girl is short and sweet, but that's that's the girl that saves my life. (laughs) Excellent. Exactly. So you didn't know how the body breaks down the sugars? Mm-hmm. Nope. No. No, nope, it just goes in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> and you just stir it, you just have it, and it's just lovely. <laughs> I mean, maybe I should have known that because Ball State let me retake a lot of science classes, <laughs> but somehow it didn't stick. It doesn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. not until you think it might kill you. <laughs> then you, you really get invested. I'm like, I think I better pay attention to this because it might make my feet cut off. <laughs> You don't want that. You don't want him to get stuck in a boot. But there are days when pizza sounds really good. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'll just cut my own feet off. It's fine. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. You can Not wear really. pizza's feet. Oh, pizza's feet. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just imagining you with pizza feet. I feel like it might be slippery if you had the right amount of cheese on it. Yeah. It could be. But you put the, the crust side down. Use right. the cheese to... Why are we... <laughs> <laughs> Can we make a sticker of pizza feet? Pizza <laughs> feet. I'm sure pizza feet. it might have an illustration. Yes. It's gotta. Sweet. Just oh an illustration. Just a, there we you go. No context no. whatsoever. Just a foot and a pizza on it. You know, like, like a pepperoni for each toenail. 
<laughs> Make it like a little sandal, maybe. <laughs> Pointy toed shoes. Right. <laughs> Beautiful. Gertie Corey. I <laughs> vote for that she has the cutest sciencey name. It's not. It's, it's an adorable name. Mm-hmm. It is an adorable name. It's yeah. so cute. I love her. All right. Any questions? Do you know what made yeah. them want to investigate investigate the sugars? I think the they, carbs. They were looking at how the body turns things into energy. So okay. they started with that. And then they were noticing something was quite interesting with energy relating to sugars okay so and i think they just kind of went down the rabbit hole yeah mm-hmm. that's but what you gotta do they wanted to figure out energy energy that's so a good thing to think about yeah the weird thing is so the energy is in our sugars and it's the thing that will kill me <laughs> <laughs> the thing that will kill me also gives me life Katie. you should nap more <laughs> i really should yeah i should nap more that would be great <laughs> Sweet. Well, that wraps it up for Science Month. Join us next Monday as we perfect our spit take because next month's research theme is funny gals. Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gals Guide patron today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>